What's up, everybody? Welcome to Horror Reviews, and let's talk about Maxine, the concluding chapter in the Ty West X trilogy, or the Mia Goth trilogy, or whatever you want to call it, Illogy. This is what it's all been leading to, the final concluding chapter that wraps up everything, gives us a nice little bow on top of this story that we've been told. So, how does it do? So, if you're brand new to the channel, let me just quickly say I am a big Ty West fan. I have been for years before lots of other people knew his name, I, you know, I'm just saying, but I am not the biggest fan of X. I'm not the, I'm even less of a fan of Pearl. I, a lot of people disagree with me. I understand that. I just did, those movies just didn't do it for me. I'm also not a very big Mia Goth fan. So knowing that going into this review, I had very low expectations for Maxine. I, I thought I was just like all the others going to be one of those people who is like, ah, it's trying to do a lot of stuff. It just doesn't work for me. The different time periods, the different styles, trying to take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this and shove it all together just doesn't work for me. That being said, before I get into any like spoilers about Maxine, I'm just going to talk about the things that I did enjoy about Maxine. And starting right off, actually, I enjoyed this one much more than I did X and Pearl personally, which is funny because again, I've so this one's a little bit divisive. It seems like some people who are big fans of X and Pearl are loving it and some are not as much, but going, starting off right off the bat, it's part of, partially my low expectations, but I also had low expectations for Pearl and I did not enjoy that. Kicking right off, I really got sucked into Maxine so much more than I did X or Pearl. Immediately to me, in my opinion, this one felt much more cohesive right off the bat, which is one of my big complaints about the other ones. It feels like they're just pulling from everything and trying to shove it together. This one, I felt the love for the 80s and it like genuinely felt like he was trying to make an 80s style film, not just like a 80s retro vibes thrown into like a modern film. The camera work, the titles, the long tracking shots, the opening shot, fantastic. I really I got sucked into this right away. The music choices are excellent. The music budget for this must have been pretty big because they have some pretty well-known songs in here. But of course, also is topped off by a nice 80s style like uh, soundtrack and score here. And so great music choices. And just like, again, this one immediately to me, it, it's much better shot. I think this one feels like there's so much more confidence behind the camera. It felt like Ty West was like wanting to get to this. It almost feels like pulling it apart. If I were to say, hey, in his head, if he was planning this trilogy and he wanted to get somewhere, the first half of Maxine seems like this is where he wanted to go. Like This is the movie he wanted to make and he just made X and Pearl to kind of get here. It felt like this was more planned. It felt like it was more intentional. And again, as a fan of, as not being a big fan of Mia Goth, I actually thought she was really good in the beginning of this film. It's, there's something about the way that she plays it, the way that Ty West wrote her, that really works better for me. In X and, and in Pearl, and again, I know like they're not the same characters, but it still feels like the Mia Goth show. You know, she's playing all these different roles and they're kind of similar to me. I know a lot of people disagreed with me when I said Maxine just kind of feels like a psychotic killer, but instead of seeking like killing she's just seeking fame and she'll get she won't let anything stand in her way to get to there she seems psychotic she seems like she like pearl saw something in maxine and they related to each other in this weird like unhealthy way and she's got this past with her dad and all this stuff and it just she just seemed like basically this crazy killer but instead of that she's like seeking fame so right off the bat in maxine to me she feels like her journey towards fame and stardom Actually, I was able to like get behind it. I was like, oh, you know what? She feels like more of a real person to me. I can understand her journey and her motivations more. It felt like we came from X and then we had a little bit of like, hey, actually, we're seeing some things that happened in X come forward in this and affect her now. You know, she's starring in porn. She's a big porn star, but she still wants to be an actress. And so there's a lot of like different little details here that the way that she plays this character actually worked for me way better. And I think that she nailed the opening scene. And in some of the trailer, some of the lines that she says, like, I, I intend to, or whatever that line is that she says, really bugged me in the trailer. But in the movie, in the context of the film, I actually think they work 
much better. So they didn't bother me nearly as much. I also felt like right away, we got more of a message in this one that was clear. I really liked the opening sequence and I'm not gonna give too much detail away just because I don't wanna give too much away. Uh, spoilers about this film yet, but you know, Mia Goth, it opens up with Mia Goth, Maxine going into an audition and she right away kind of, they pull from La La Land, that sequence in La La Land, which I think that they pulled just enough from it to feel like inspired without stealing it. And they do an element where she goes right into this like emotional scene, this like, you know, really complex scene and she, the tears are coming. And then the directors are kind of like, okay, well, that was cool. Now do this. And so I really liked that element of it. She really showing like the grittiness and the dirtiness of Hollywood at that time, as well as what an actress has to go through to try to make it, as well as trying to come out of like doing porn and then trying to be taken seriously. So I really liked that element that they did, as well as like showing the casting director, the director, and how they can just be so robotic and, you know, reading off a script, having no faith in the actor, and then this emotional performance comes out and they're like cool let's move on to this like very you know surface level aspect of acting and can you do this and they're just like not phased by it so i really liked that it worked in la la land i think it worked pretty well in maxine and i liked that he was trying to show like the dirty parts of hollywood there's lots of like lines in here where they talk about you know it opens with a direct quote talking about how you have to become a monster to become famous in Hollywood. So I felt to me like Ty West's vision was much clearer in this. Felt like Maxine's goal, again, much clearer. She felt real to me, like a real person that even though she's not the nicest person, I can understand and get behind. Plus we get a little bit of this like dirty underbelly of Hollywood and she's got to defend herself. It makes so much more sense to me. I can hop on board besides going to some farm and try to shoot porn. And then there's psycho killers randomly there who just are trying to happen to kill, try to kill this like loosely psychotic person. And then she just defends herself. It just doesn't, that doesn't work for me. You know, being stalked at night in Hollywood in the eighties and having to defend herself works so much better for me. It makes more sense. I just, it, I was able to hop on board. So as I said, speaking from a not Mia Goth fan, I'm not the hugest fan of her in most of her movies. This is my favorite performance from her so far, at least the first half of this film. I actually genuinely enjoyed the performance. I thought it was more nuanced. There was some restraint in there. And when it came time for her to be like that sort of tough character who, you know, doesn't like hold back, it felt to me like she was playing it more, again, nuanced. Like she was putting on a facade to me. Like this Hollywood tough act was starting to crack her a little bit. And she's putting on this facade more than anything else, more than just being just like not right in the head. It felt to me more, again, genuine, I guess is the best word. And so I was able to get behind that more. But talking about acting Moses Sumney's character, I guess it's so much, Moses Sumney plays it well, but it's, maybe it's not so much even the acting. Not that Moses Sumney is bad, but the character is really good. I really liked the character. I really liked this like video store rental character, this friend with Maxine. And I liked this just the glasses and the way that they're infatuated with like, or not infatuated, but like very obsessed with underground horror films and things like that. I really appreciated that character a lot. The rest of the side characters in this, I think could be, could come and go as they please. I didn't care about them. The cops in this, again, I'm not gonna go too much into detail at the moment, but they are not great. I just think they're, you know, cut and paste cops in Hollywood. They just don't really work for me. The acting doesn't really work for me. However, let's talk about Kevin Bacon real quick. I'm a Kevin Bacon fan. I've heard some negative things about his performance in this. I thought he was great. I really liked Kevin Bacon in this. I thought he just chewed up the scenes he was in. And he really, his, the way he played this character really worked for me. I enjoyed him uh, as this part of this, like, again, this maybe like dirty underground belly of like, underbelly of LA, Hollywood in the 80s and and like things coming back from your past. And I, I, I like the way he played it. I thought he was great. The other aspect I did enjoy about Maxine is the movie inside the movie. And I'm always, you know, as a Scream fan, being a fan of Stab, I'm always a sucker when you can 
create a good movie inside of the movie that references other things but still works in the film. I thought the Puritan 2 was a really cool concept to tie into these like, you know, gory slasher films that were like, you know, video nasties of the time and and we're getting all this hate from people and like parents not being, you know, wanting to censor these films. And so I thought and then also seeing the director wanting to like tell a compelling story and try to break out in Hollywood through this sequel to a horror film that got its, you know, popularity on home video. I think that, that was a really cool aspect. I think they could have definitely done more with the story of the Puritan to tie into Maxine a little better rather than just stating things. But I liked it. I liked what I saw of the film. Plus, just this is like, again, this whole concept of these like almost video nasty type 80s films where, you know, they get this, these fame and in home video releases and then they get sequels tied to them, you know, sequel after sequel after sequel like we saw in the 80s. And so I really liked that aspect of it. However, it did not like at the end what happens with the film. And again, not giving too many spoilers away, but just like what happens with the film in terms of its success and where it goes, I just think it didn't really make sense to me. But I'll get into that maybe a little bit more in negatives in a second. So let's talk about the kills real quick. There's not a ton of kills in this film. And people talked about this being Giallo inspired. I didn't really feel like it was until I watched the film. Like from the trailer, I was like, ah, yeah, okay. The film doesn't feel that Giallo to me until we get to the kills. And then they're shot in kind of like a Giallo inspired way, which I would have preferred they go full 80s, which they do in pieces. But, I don't know, they look okay to me. You know, the gore and the practical effects here work okay. They're a little bit on the nose, intentionally so, and doesn't work entirely for me. And there's not just, there's not a lot of kills. So, when they're there, they work. There's some practical effects when they're used, although predictable, work well. They're pretty cool. There's one scene in particular with a guy in the alley that made the audience turn their heads and make noises, which I think worked really well. That was a cool aspect. And then there's a head explosion at the end. I'm not going to say who, but it's not really that big of a deal. You can see it coming. And that works pretty well. Again, I don't think it works in the movie. Like, it's like, it's kind of like 80s style, I guess, where it doesn't really make sense for there to be a head explosion here. But then they're going to like cut away and it's like, boom, of course they're going to do that. And so, I mean, the effects look cool. Does it do anything for the story or the end of the movie? Not really. I know I'm forgetting some aspects that I really did enjoy about Maxine, but as I said, this one just feels so much more cohesive. I can feel the style just oozing, the title reveal of Maxine. Again, long tracking opening shots, fantastic. I loved them. I love the way the opening of this film was shot. I love the music. Oh, that's another thing I want to talk about. The editing in this film felt much more, again, great word for me to use is cohesive. It just felt smooth. Like I didn't notice the cuts as much. I noticed it just seemed more seamless and more confident in the camera work, in the music, sound design, in the acting, in the editing. Everything felt much more top notch to me, more confident. And this one is edited by Ty West, which I didn't know he edited all of his films until this one. Um, apparently he had help editing Max or excuse me, X, but for the most part, it seems like he edits all of his films. So mad respect to Ty West for that. Didn't notice it or didn't know that. Uh, this one felt again just much more cohesive to me. Um, this one in IMDB for some reason doesn't he doesn't have the writing credit. There's no writing credit anywhere in IMDB that I can see. But according to the credits in Google, Ty West did write and direct this one also. Um, and edited this one. So I know I keep saying this, but like this is the film to me. If I hadn't seen X and I hadn't seen Pearl and I went into this, I would have been like, heck yes, this is awesome. Give me more of this. Up until you get the end, I'm like, yep, I'm all for it. Sign me up. Of course, I have negative things coming over from X and Pearl that I wanted him to show me tied up or were better. Speaking of tied up, the, I like that there are some repercussions from X that come into Maxine. Thank you, Ty West, for actually trying to wrap pieces up at least a little bit. I like that we saw repercussions and things carry over. It wasn't just like another film that doesn't really have anything to do with the other two except for the characters. So that being said, before I get into the negatives and spoilers, honestly, Maxine was a great time for me until you get to the end of the film, like maybe the third act, I'd say things start to fall apart. But I genuinely enjoyed the first maybe two thirds of this film, half to two thirds. And 
for me, again, not being a Bayhawks fan, not being a big Pearl fan, I'd say go check this one out. You know, temper your expectations a little bit, but it's a good time. The Night Stalker elements in there, don't expect them to be big. I'm going to go into my negatives in that in a second, but don't expect that any of that stuff really to be big in this film. This is a Mia Goth film. It's a Maxine film, just like all the other ones. So if you want that and you like that going into this, I think you'll probably have a really good time with a solid chunk of this film. All right, now I'm going to get into some negatives and also spoiler talks. This is your warning. If you have not seen Maxine, I will be talking about spoilers because I just want to I don't want to sit here and harp and tear this film apart piece by piece. I just want to go through some major issues that really bring this film down. And that does include a lot of spoilers and things and storylines that carry over from X and Pearl and tie together. So that being said, again, this is your warning going into the negatives. Let's talk about the big one. The ultimate conclusion that ties this trilogy together. The sh surprising ending the thing that no one could have saw coming oh the night stalker has nothing to do with this film in fact it is her dad the priest that comes out of nowhere in the end of the film and is the bad guy for some reason why i don't know everything to do with the father just doesn't work for me it didn't work in x when they crammed that piece into the end of x it doesn't work with the tie-in with pearl again I know they're not the same person, but there are clearly motivational character elements with parenting and not respecting your father and becoming a killer or be or seeking fame. There are obviously emotional beats tied together that don't work for me in X, that don't work for me in Pearl, that don't work for me in Maxine. What does work for me is her seeking fame because of the trauma in her childhood that works for me. Bring her dad in as a priest at the end and this insane cult meeting where they're like videoing for what reason? Let's talk. Okay, so for what doesn't work? The, the actor. Terrible. He's terrible as her father. The whole preacher element. I, again, if you're a big fan, if you are a fan of my channel or if you follow along my channel, you know I do not like religious stuff that's just religious stuff is bad. Priest bad because priest bad. What is his motive? Why did he start killing people? Because he wanted his daughter back? Why didn't he just abduct his daughter? Why does he have to become the Night Stalker? What was the point of them making us think it's the Night Stalker? What was the point of this tie-in together? They had nothing to do with each other. Why did he kill these people? Why did he video it? To make her famous? He could have abducted her and made her famous. He could have pinned the kills on her to make her famous. There's no tie-in, no motivation, no clear understanding besides the fact that he's crazy and he's a priest. But he's crazy because he's a priest. There's no real like, ah, evil in the world, bad. So must me must be bad because me religious. And me must kill because they are bad. That's it. That's it for me. Like, that's all that I got from that. I think he plays it way too over the top. And I, I just hate that you can't show me like, what are they following? What's the cult following? There's one like loose piece of dialogue where they're like, you didn't go to the, or you didn't, Oh, we're upset at the police when they couldn't find your families. So did he like abduct their families or the, did the Night Stalker kill their families? Or I don't understand what happened with their family. Why are they following him? Why are they so devoted to him to be like abducting and killing people? I don't understand. And how much did he pay Kevin Bacon to also be okay with him just going and abducting and killing people in broad, like in the middle of people watching him, like Kevin Bacon is just watching him kill people. And he's like, Boy, you've got some nerve on you. Why? Why was there's no secrecy there? And he's supposed to be this big leader of some kind. It just none of that worked for me. None of the motivation worked for me. Mia Goth finding out her father is the person who's killing her friends. She's like, cool. Like, all right, tie me to a tree. That's I mean, there's no reaction. The entire third act of this film genuinely felt just crammed together. It really felt like he had a solid piece he wanted to tell. And then he made two movies to get to that piece. And then he's like, ah, oh, I got to wrap it up also. So we've got like a solid maybe hour of a good idea that needs two separate films and an ending to get to. For me, in my opinion, that feels confident. That feels like it's necessary. It did a good job. Everything else is just shoehorned in. Shoot out with the cops. The cops are ridiculous in general. Like they're just these copy and paste ridiculous over the top elements of these cops who are trying to be like 
I mean, they're just they're trying to be actors in a cop in a movie where there's cops. That's literally what they're trying to do. They're even talking about how their performances every time they interrogate Maxine or every time they do something, they're putting on a show. And then they're just there's this ridiculous shootout with two cops and these like, you know, cult followers or leaders who have guns in the Hollywood sign. Let's real quick talk about the Hollywood sign. It's way too small when they like are running up the hill. It doesn't make sense at all. And then they show this big shot to try to make it feel like it's like the scale is just all over the place. Doesn't work. And then there's a helicopter all of a sudden and they're like, Maxine, you're, you're, you know, the gig is up, the jig is up, whatever. It's just none of it works for me. And she's just sitting there about to shoot her dad. Of course, she's going to kill her dad. Cuts forward to the fame of the movie then the Puritan again, which does not work for me. This movie shouldn't be. It's like, oh, it's the biggest movie in the world right now in the 80s. This slasher sequel. No, it's not. The Puritan is not. It's not going to be this big premiere. It's not going to launch her to stardom. It wouldn't do that. It just before the movie's even like finished being made. That's not going to happen. I'm sorry, but no, I don't buy that for a second. I don't buy her stardom. And I just don't buy the ending where it's like, I know there's these pieces of elements that are trying to be tied together with like Maxine and the trilogy and Ty West and her saying, I don't want it to end and the stardom and, you know, Ty West not wanting the trilogy to end. And there's all these little pieces that are being tied together with this love of 80s and this love of horror and making your own trilogy. I appreciated the fact that he threw a line in there where, you know, he said in the movie, like, we don't want to be a, a final girl like every other final girl. And sure, I appreciate that. Okay, he was trying to do a different trilogy. I get it. But you still have to like make it work. And it just doesn't work for me in the film The Puritan, in the fame that she got, or in Maxine. In addition to that, of course, it was also super predictable. I mean, I could have guessed it would be her dad back in X, but I actually pushed that out of my mind because I thought that's way too predictable. This Night Stalker character can't be her dad. It cannot be her dad because that would be stupid. I thought that through the entirety of this film and just pushed it to the back of my mind. And then guess what? It's her dad. I mean, it's just none of it works. None of it works. And again, I don't want to sit here and just pick apart every little piece. But it's really a shame because I know some people are going to enjoy this. Some people are not going to like the ending, but overall, there are big fans of X. There are big fans of Pearl. And I know there's going to be big fans of Maxine, but it sucks because even as even coming from a person who's not a fan of those films, if you are a fan of X and if you are a fan of Pearl, Maxine doesn't wrap it up in a justified way. It just doesn't do justice to the trilogy that we are being sold. In my opinion, if you're a fan, I'd feel a bit cheated. And that's really disappointing because... Although, again, this isn't necessarily for me. I'm not the target audience right here, even though I feel like I should be. If you are a fan, it sucks because this doesn't do it justice. And it's just another instance of a trilogy that should go down in history as a great trilogy, but really just doesn't land the ship at the end. And that sucks. All that being said, I know I'm probably forgetting pieces here and there. Uh, just There's just a lot to be said, a lot of little things. And... I did have a good time watching Maxine, but unfortunately that last third is going to make me not want to reach for this again. I can't imagine when I'm going to want to watch this film again. I just can't. So that sucks because I really did enjoy like a solid half to two thirds of this film. And I, you know, I'm not going to want to watch it again. So that's my review of Maxine. I'm sure I forgot some pieces here and there. So you got to let me know down in the comments what you thought of Maxine and what pieces really worked for you and what pieces really did not. There's lots of little things that I stood out to me that, again, I probably forgot because when you get to that end, it just doesn't come together and that sucks. But let me know what your favorite of the trilogy is below. I will do a ranking at some point, probably here in the near future. That being said, thank you all for watching. Take care. I don't care. scared. I'm a big, bad wolf. Oh, I never see the silver line and only see the gold. I don't speak in caps, dog. Everything bold. And I put that on myself because it's a life that I done chose. I said, come through. You can see me on the west side. Now it's funny how they walking with each other.